nation. That's going to happen and is happening. And there will be famines. And what's next? Pestilences. That's the next thing Jesus said. He said so. Disease epidemics are going to sweep this earth and particularly hit our peoples when you understand here in America, Canada, Britain, Australia, New Zealand. They're going to hit hard. Terrible disease epidemics. Will you believe the Christ of the Bible and his specific statements? Think about it. At this point, my friends, I invite you to call or write immediately for a free copy of a truly vital booklet entitled 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. This booklet is powerful. This eye-opening booklet will give you 14 specific prophetic events to watch for these major world events lead right up to the second coming of Jesus Christ as King of Kings. Fourteen signs announcing Christ's return will make your television news viewing and your newspaper reading truly come alive. News will come alive as these events happen. So call us or write us now before you forget. You can also order this booklet at our website at tomorrowsworld.org. Just ask for the free booklet on 14 signs. That's all you need. To receive this program's offer absolutely free, or if you would like more information, visit our website online at tomorrowsworld.org. Once again, that's tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write us at the address shown. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Now back to our topic, my friends, benchmarks of prophecy. Remember, we just covered three of these vital benchmarks. First was drought, famine, and food shortages. Second was a continuing financial disaster. The third benchmark was raging disease epidemics. Now the fourth benchmark is a revived Roman Empire. Number four, a revived Roman Empire. For decades, many of us in this very work have directly warned you about a coming revival of the Holy Roman Empire. The groundwork is being laid for this right now. We've published articles about this regularly in Tomorrow's World and had many booklets referring in detail to it. Note what your own Bible clearly says, my friends. Turn to Revelation 17 in your Bible. Revelation 17 Turn there in your Bible and check up on me. I wish I had time to describe all this chapter. But Revelation 17 and verse 8, he describes a beast that was and is not and yet is and how it's going to ascend out of a bottomless pit. Most biblical scholars know this is talking about a revived Roman Empire and it's going to have seven heads and there's seven mountains on which the woman sits, as it says in verse 9. Seven different revivals through this time. There are also seven kings when the thing was to be made plain. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come, and he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not is himself the eighth. The final beast is going to be the seventh revival of this system. But the eighth Roman, because the original Roman Empire, of course, went down in, in 476. So he says it will be the eighth of the whole system. And the ten horns which you saw on this final beast, verse 12, are ten kings who receive no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour, a very short time with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. And he's going to get them to give their power to him, to give their power to him in this revived Roman Empire. This power becomes the greatest power on earth by far, taking over vast parts of the world and the world's economy, as the whole 18th chapter explains. Note the power and the incredible arrogance of these final kings in verse 14. These will make war with the Lamb, 
and the Lamb, Jesus Christ, will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. Wow! They're even willing to fight their very creator. This growing power in Europe will literally change everything around you within the next several years. Wake up, American Britain, and learn to believe God's inspired word. This is coming. It's underway now. Number five, a great false prophet will soon arise. Notice Revelation 13, verse 11. He talks here about another beast coming up out of the earth. Revelation 13, 11 in your Bible. He looks like the lamb, Christ, but he speaks like the dragon. And notice he exercises all the power of the first beast, which we've seen was the Holy Roman Empire. He rules and sits on that beast and guides it. He's in charge overall, guiding that. He uses the power of that beast. And verse 13 is the key. This coming false prophet at the time of the end performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. And it shows here in verse 15, he will cause as many as would not worship the beast to be killed. He's going to cause those who will not worship the image of the beast to be killed. There will be a coming martyrdom of true saints. Think about it. And back in Revelation 19, he describes what's going to happen to this guy. Does he win? In the end, who wins? Notice in Revelation 19, John writes in verse 19, I saw the beast and kings of the earth and their armies gathered together, and they were to fight Christ, and the beast was captured, and with them the false prophet, this fellow, the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast. And these two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. That is his end. Don't be deceived by him. But a great false prophet is coming. Now benchmark number six is a covenant or treaty allowing sacrifices in Jerusalem. Turn with me, if you would, to chapter 9 of Daniel. You'll see, after describing the 70 weeks prophecy in verses 23 to 26, when Christ was going to come and he was to be cut off not for himself, in verse 26, the Messiah was to be cut off. And then it says, and the people of the prince who is to come, a prince, what prince? Most commentaries show you it's a Roman prince typified by the man who came in, Titus, who came in at 70 AD, but he was just a type of the final one. The Roman prince was to come in and destroy the city of the sanctuary, and the end of it will be with a flood till the end of the war. Desolations are determined. Then he, the final one, shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, and he's apparently going to allow sacrifices and in the middle of the week, then he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. But the sacrifices can't come to an end unless they're started. So we have to watch for some kind of covenant between this coming Roman Empire, this revived power, and the nation of Israel to allow animal sacrifices, apparently in Jerusalem, perhaps even on the Temple Mount. And he shall break the seven-year treaty after three and one-half years. At that point, my friends, it would become more obvious when Christ is coming back. It will be about three and a half years from then. Yes, we still won't know the exact day or hour, but the start of this seven-year treaty or covenant, which may take place just in the next few years, will send an exciting signal. Exciting. Watch for it. Now the next thing that Jesus talks about and the Bible talks about, the final benchmark is Christ's second coming at the last trump. And turn to Revelation here, chapter 11. Revelation, if you would, in your Bible, chapter 11 now. And let's turn at this point to verse 15. He says, Then the seventh angel sounded this final trump, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. So we need to really look forward to that. Do you truly fear the name of God? Will you be among the people who are raised from the grave at Christ's return? Are you really preparing to assist the living Christ in ruling over this earth? Christ is coming back, and he's wanting to come back to set up a kingdom preparing to set up a kingdom based on love. Turn back to the book of Psalms, Psalm 72. 
Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. He will judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. Christ is coming back in a loving and serving kingdom to help this earth and bring them prosperity and peace and justice. The mountains will bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He will bring justice to the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy, people who are suffering all over and break in pieces the oppressors. They shall fear you. The deep regard for God will finally sweep this earth. As long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations, he shall come down like rain upon the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days, the righteous shall flourish and abundance of peace until the moon is no more. May God help you to truly understand and want to serve the true Jesus Christ of your Bible. So watch and pray, my friends, and look forward to this time. And now we want to mention one more time this tremendous opportunity you have to get this powerful booklet. You need this truly eye-opening booklet, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. It will be sent absolutely free upon your request. This eye-opening booklet will give you 14 specific events to watch for. These major world events lead right up to Christ's second coming as King of Kings. 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return will make your television news viewing, your newspaper reading truly come alive. So call us or write us right now before you forget. And you can also order this booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. Just ask for the free booklet on 14 signs. That's all you need. And tune in every week to Tomorrow's World program. On this program, you'll gain precious information and insights available nowhere else. Richard Ames and I will give you understanding of current events and of the exciting prophecies of tomorrow's world. We also invite you to join our fellow presenters, Wallace Smith and Rod King, who will give you specific perspective and insight on vital biblical topics. So be sure to join us again next week, right here at the same time. See you here next week. To receive this program's offer absolutely free, or if you would like more information, visit our website online at tomorrowsworld.org. Once again, that's tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write us at the address shown. To view today's program, order the free literature offered, or for more information on today's vital subject, visit us online at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.